Hello class, in this video we'll talk about camera operation, how to use your camera for filming. Um, I'm using the PowerPoint from my Introduction to Digital Art course, so it is showing as intro to photography, but uh, we'll talk about intro to video filming. So before we get started for, uh, for a filming project, the most importantly is the artificial lights. Uh, the lighting is more important than the setting on your camera. Okay. Uh, so you should make sure that your film has enough lighting. So here I would uh, refer to the three-point light theory. Um, if you took uh, the intro to DGR course with me, um, I have explained this in that course. So basically in most setting, we will use uh, three different light. One key light, right? one field light, and one backlight to illuminate the subject. Okay, so now let's talk about the um, camera. So this is the type of camera you can get from the library or if you have your own um, the setting or um, uh, the interface should be similar. Okay, so first this is how you would uh, set for filming. Just get this button to the top, you'll get the filming. And for the mood, I would suggest you set as M, which is manual. Okay. Here are some other uh, modes, which uh, which is cool, but I don't recommend it to use for professional filming. I would su suggest you to just set as manual, so we have more control on the camera. Okay, and here's the uh, LED screen that you can preview your your movie. And if you can see the screen, um, you you just have to press this button in the in the video mode press this button to switch between the LED mode and the night view mode. Okay. And then second, uh, the color mode. So I would recommend you set a, okay, let me show you. So if we put a Q and then here you can set the color mode. So I suggest you to set as white balanced or auto, which is this one. So here, these are other modes that, as you can see, uh, they get different colors, right? And cloudy and shade and daylight. And each mode has a different color. So I would recommend you to set to white balance or auto. Okay, and this is how it looks. So that is the color mode. And this is the camera that uh, I recommend you to use for filming, uh, the camera you can get from the library. Uh, the T5i. So from the library, you can get uh, the Canon cameras with different uh, models. Uh, Canon T5i is more kind of user friendly for filming. Just let you know. The default lens is a 18 to 55 mm millimeter lens, and you can film the wide angle shot. Not super wide angle because this is not a wide wide angle lens. It's just a standard lens, but you can get a wide angle shot. Okay, you can detach this lens by press this button here and then just rotate your camera uh, on this direction and you can deattach it. And then you can use other lens if you want a different type of shot. For example, if you want more kind of zoom in shot, um, you can get a uh, 75 to 300 millimeter lens and that way you can zoom into your subject very close. And see here it has a red button. So to attach a lens onto your camera, your camera should also have a similar icon. For this lens, it has a red icon, and you should on your camera you should have a red red icon, and you just have to align them, and then put the lens in and rotate to knock it, and you'll hear a clip sound when the lens is attached. Okay, and for your lens, it doesn't matter what type of lens you have. You should you should have a switch at here. It has AF and MF. So that is basically automatically focus or manual focus. Okay, for photo, a lot of time photographer they take photos of um, you know subjects. They will use auto focus because you know uh, the subject is moving and you don't have the time to really kind of focus the subject before uh, you take a photo. So they will do auto. But for filming, in a lot of cases, I would suggest you to do MF, which is manual focus. So in that case, we can actually control what is the focal distance. Uh, let me give you an example. If you are film a interview video, right? Your uh, subject, your actor is uh, sitting there 
and you have a solid st distance between your camera and your actor, your interviewee. Um, and if you set your camera focused as uh, the autofocus, and if there's a bird flying around or if there's a car driven through in the background, and then your lens will pick up the background and your interviewee will, you know, um, be out of a focus. So that is the problem we have. So do manual focus. So we have more control. Uh, you can choose whatever subject you want to focus and stay there. Okay, so that's the lens. And uh, here are the three main components, um, the settings on your camera that matters on the image quality, you know, other than the focus that I mentioned. These are other three components. And the basically controls the lighting on your camera. So in the first stage, I asked you to get enough lighting, either artificial lights or natural lights, right, in your environment before filming. And then when we get to the setting part, uh, here are the three settings that matters. First is ISO, second is shutter speed, third is the aperture. And let me go through the other slides to show you each of these. So first ISO, and here's a um, detailed description about what is it. So I'll give you about a few seconds to just read it. So in short, basically ISO, it means you know, your camera's sensitivity to lights. When you have a higher ISO on your camera, your camera will have a higher sensitivity to the lights. So the footage will be brighter. However, the downside is film with a higher ISO will cause the green, uh, which is the noise on the footage, as you can see here in the video. See, this is how it looks. So as you increase the ISO, your footage will be brighter, but you'll, you'll have the noise on your footage. Okay. So here's an example of how the ISO looks. Um, this video, basically the ISO setting is a 6,000. Okay, so super high. And if we lower down, as you can see, the footage is really dark. In a lot of cases, if you set ISO to low, you can't see anything in the footage, right? That is because you don't have uh, uh, if enough lighting in the environment. Uh, however, if you set the ISO a little bit too high, you can see your subject, but in the background, um, you may have some lights, some natural lights or artificial lights, and it washed out. Um, it's, it is a purely white, which shouldn't be, okay? So this is how you will solve it, see? Lower down your ISO first, and then add more lights, more artificial lights. So now we can see the subject, and also other lights in the video it will still has its original color. So the whole footage is balanced. The color and the lighting is, is balanced. And this is the differences. So uh, the top image is you just use ISO um, to boost up the sensitivity on your camera. And this is the result you can get. You can see the, f um, the character, the subject very clear. However, the background being washed out. And also you may have a lot of green or noise on your footage, uh, that is down, downside. And uh, the bottom image, it has a more kind of a balanced lighting. Um, as we can see that um, the lights on the character is more smooth and there's a no noisy, uh, the green on the footage. And also the background is very balanced. The color and the lights is very balanced and uh, all of the lights show its original color. Okay, so here's my recommendation. Uh, when you do a film, uh, here it says photo, but uh, here I, I refer to video or filming. Okay, so when you do a filming, um, never set ISO higher than 800. Okay, because if it is higher than 800, you'll catch uh, the green, the noise in your video. So always set ISO around 200, start with one, even 100, and then 200, and then um, start to add more lights if your footage is a little bit dark and then you will get the best result on reducing the green. In the daytime, outdoor, if uh, it's a sunny weather, I would uh, set the ISO as 100, okay? Because there's a, uh, enough lighting, uh, enough natural lights. And then, you know, start ISO as 100 and ad adjust other settings, like uh, 
uh, shutter speed and aperture to get the best lighting. I will explain in the other video. And if you are doing indoor filming and sometimes you may not have enough lights and then I will start with 200 and, st and see if I can get, uh, you know, I can add more lights in and if not, and then I will try 400, okay, but never higher than 800. Here's how you can uh, set your ISO, change your ISO. Uh, on the top, you have this uh, button ISO, just click on that. And then on the screen, um, it should allow you to pick up a ISO setting. Okay, this is 100. As you can see, the environment is very dark. And this is the auto. So for the ISO, um, I recommend you use manual, never set as auto for filming. So here, let me give you another example. Um, if you are filming outdoor, right, and you are doing a, for example, either interview video or um, just a short film. So a lot of time you would film several takes for, for each shot, for each scene, right? And each time, you know, if your ISO set as auto, and since your camera is aiming to a different position where you may have a different uh, kind of framing or uh, there maybe the weather is kind of cloudy so sometimes the light is stronger sometimes it's a, a little bit darker and if the ISO set as auto it will automatically adjust the ISO uh, based on your uh, your subjects in the uh, in the screen or the lighting okay so that will be a big problem let's see if you film your first shot right the uh and iso set as auto and uh for example it pick up 200 and then second shot with the same environment same character the auto iso it may pick up 800 or 400 and then one footage will be darker another will be brighter and when you edit in them together and you will see they have totally different lighting and different color and that will be problematic so that's why I would suggest you always kind of uh, manually do the ISO based on your environment, your subject, and your framing, and the actual lighting. Okay, so we have talked about ISO, and then the next is uh, the shutter speed. So what is shutter speed? Here's a paragraph of words that uh, explain you the concept. I'll give you a few seconds to read. So basically the shutter speed is the exposure time, right? How long you want your, um, your photo to be exposed uh, or your, your video, you know, each frame of the video to be exposed. So that is the shutter speed. Um, a lot of people think shutter speed only matters uh, when you do photo and not video uh, is wrong. So think about how video works. When you film a video, uh, you will be able to choose a different frame rate, right? Um, so the standard film uh, frame rate is 24 frames per second. So that means in each second your camera will record 24 frames, which are 24 photos. So the shutter speed will matter uh, how much time each frame will expose to the lights. So shutter speed can be adjusted directly on the top. So here's a gear on the top and you can turn it left and right and you will change your shutter speed here. So the first number here is the shutter speed, and here's the ISO we already explained. Um, so now you can see that when you adjust the shutter speed from this gear on the top of the camera, um, right? If we get a slower shutter speed, your video will be brighter because each frame of the video, it'll expose the lights with a longer time. So in the end, the video will be brighter. Here's a tripod um, you can get from the library, okay? So the advantage of use uh, a tripod is is more stable if you, especially when you film documentary film or interview videos, uh, you want more kind of a stable shots and you would get a tripod. And to attach your camera to a tripod on the top of the tripod, see here it has a small thin and you uh, here's a buckle and you can get uh, this uh, a small device out from the tripod and then attach it on your camera by turning uh, here this screw and you can you can get these small devices uh, into your camera and then you can put your camera on the tripod 
and it will have a clip sound when it is knocked and see here now it is knocked all right so that is the shutter speed and then third big component is aperture um so aperture also has another word which is um f number uh in photography you, you will hear this um term a lot of time uh the f number you know increase the f number or decrease the f number so that is referred to aperture okay and here's a uh, detailed explanation about the f number i'll give you a few seconds to read okay so in short f number or aperture is the size of the hole on the lens how much how big you want to open it all right it's very easy to understand um so you can take a look of your pupil so uh in the in outdoor uh in the sunny weather your pupil will be really small right and in the light in a dark room your pupil will be big you know, uh, when your pupil get bigger it will allow more lights get into your eyeball so you can see things better in a dark environment so same thing for a camera um, if you decrease the opening on the lens right and you will have less lights coming into the lens so your footage will be darker um, and on the other side if you make it bigger increase the hole on your lens you will have more lights getting in and your footage will be much brighter right so we see increase aperture which is increase the size of the hole the opening on the lens and the f number works in the opposite way so when we see decrease the f number we mean increase the aperture and here's an example how you can um, change the aperture so on your camera you should have this button av plus and minus so click on that you uh, you will open the aperture and then on the top with the same gear you will be able to adjust the amateur so amateur is here this number as we lower the f number down uh, we'll increase the aperture which is the size of the opening on the lens and the footage gets brighter okay so these are the three big components uh, the three main setting on your camera uh, in order to get the best lighting quality again I recommend you set everything as manual, right? The ISO as manual, and F number definitely manual, and shutter speed, and also, let me go back to the first slide, and also on the lens, uh, you'll set the focus as manual, manual focus. So you can use the top ring, which is the focus distance. Use that to adjust the focus. And for the color mode, use white balance, which is this one okay and for the filming mode use M the manual filming mode so that is the setting on your camera however before you get to this part you know you should make sure always make sure you have enough lights for your environment uh, it can be either artificial lights or natural light since many of you is taking this course from home and you don't have a professional camera uh, so in the next part, I'll explain you how to use your phone to film a good quality video. So on your phone, you should have a setting. For example, mine. Uh, so here, for example, if I choose a professional photo mode and see here down below, I can change the ISO the shutter speed as is the shutter speed ev is the uh the amateur and here is the focus auto focus by default and here's a awp which is a white balance um so the iso let's see if i aim to different position you can see the iso have been changed and the s which is the shutter speed oops also have changed so they are all set to automatically right by default so that's why when you aim in your phone to a different um, position with different lighting different framing um, the lighting on your screen is always stay the same because they are set auto so the change 
you know, corresponding to the lighting. So um, here on your phone, you can also choose ISO, for example, here if I click, see I can switch from auto to a specific number. If uh, this is the daytime with the sunny weather, I will start with 100, right? And for shutter speed, okay, for shutter speed, uh, instead of auto, I can also choose a specific. So for outdoor, uh, with the sunny weather, I would do about four, uh, one four hundredth. Let's see here. Okay, but ab absolutely, as you can see, it is not a sunny weather. So I would uh, um, rise it a little bit. So maybe about, let's see, it's going to be dark. About eight, uh, one eightieth should be a good value. Uh, the reason why you see it is a little bit dark is because um, you know my camera that I use to recording this, uh, I didn't set the ISO very high, so it's a bit dark. But on my phone, it's pretty bright. Okay, so this gives you the idea about how to um, use your phone to get the best setting for filming. So it's the same as how you use your camera. You know. Uh, the ISO, the shutter speed, the um, aperture, which are these three values, they are matter for lighting, and the focus uh, matters for you know focus, auto focus or auto, uh, or manual focus. So here for the focus on your phone, we can also choose manual, right? Manual, and then I can click on different location, and that will um, pick up the, the the place I clicked and focus on that part. And uh, for color mode, uh, as I explained earlier, I suggest you choose um, the white balanced, right? And here are other color mode, you can choose each with a different color, but just to stay with white balanced. All right, now I have another phone, I use another phone, which is not as good as the last one I show you. So as you can see, for this phone, I don't have any uh, option to go professional photo or video. Uh, so I cannot see the ISO or uh, shutter speed, everything. So all I can do is just filming and the phone will pick up the ISO setting or shutter speed for me. So in that case, what you can do is, um, at least most of the phone, it allows you to pick up a location to focus, right? And also um, adjust the ISO based on the color, the lighting of the place you choose. So uh, my suggestion is with this type of phone that you won't be able to do a professional video or filming uh, or photo shooting. So you'll just click on the brightest part, you know, in the frame, and then it'll focus um, and uh, adjust the ISO for you, and then you start to film. So um, don't worry if the footage is a little bit darker. Um, so if it is darker, it's always better than if it is too bright. If it is too bright, for example, if I pick up a black area, for example, here, see, if it is too bright, all the color have been washed out, so it is super hard for you to do editing. And if it is darker, you can still get the color back in uh, Premiere or in After Effects by doing the color correction or adjust the exposure. All right, so always pick up the bright spot. Um, if you get a, a you know, super, super bright, thing in the in the scene. Uh, you don't want to pick up that because that will dark the whole thing. So just to pick up a bright spot, but not too bright, not like this, right? So a bright spot. And if the footage is darker, um, it's fine. Just to make sure, uh, you know, everything in the frame, it get uh, color, not pure white. Okay.